Uh, haven't had any ends open in a while. Uh, what feels like a while at least. Uh, this is a pretty easy open under the gun for me. Um, all right, real aces, I really like three betting. Feels like I've been three betting way too often though. Um, and facing Trevor's under the gun range, I kind of give him some respect for having a tighter range and opening here. So we're just gonna call this and see what develops. All right, very similar spot to the last time when I, when I four bet Marley. Uh, my hand's a little bit better this time. Obviously having two Broadways in my hand is great. Like I said before, I expect Trevor to be wider than the rest of the players from under the gun, and I expect uh, Ethan to be pretty wide here in later position, just with the call here. So um, I think obviously I have the best hand the majority of the time, and if I don't, my hand uh, plays margin pretty well post flop. So I'm more than happy with three betting this one. With the extra dead money in here, I'm going to go a little bit bigger then 4x, perhaps 5x or more from the small blind, given that I'm gonna be out of position. Obviously, if Trevor calls, it might incentivize uh, Ethan to call too, so all the more reason to punish them a little bit more with the bigger raise. So we get flatted by Ethan and three bet Bajani. Uh, Ethan's flat. It's gonna be a lot of pocket pairs, suited Broadway's type hands. Uh, Johnny can be squeezing with a bunch of different hands here, I think. He's been pretty tight for the most part. Uh, but I have a really good hand to four bet here with, and I was under the gun, so I have uh, really good hands here. So I'm gonna put in a four bet. Don't love it, but I think it's a good hand to go with. Uh, I like it better than flatting and letting Ethan come in, so I'm gonna put it in. 420. One of the issues for us not three betting is letting someone else three bet, but now that we see a four bet, we're just gonna easily get out of here and let those two battle it out. This is definitely unfortunate given that given that Trevor uh, raced from under the gun, he definitely could be using his, uh, his perceived tight range to his advantage here and turning a hand like ace five suited into a four bet bluff spot, thinking that I'm squeezing here. Problem is, is if I jam it in with the king queen, he definitely has enough to fold here. Um, and given that he's in position and made it 420, I actually like his sizing here. It's definitely tough for me to continue though with this hand out of position. Uh, really tough spot, I'm thinking that um, all options are on the table. Definitely can find a fold here, definitely can find a call. Wish my hand was suited. I'd be more likely to call if my hand was suited, but I think it's gonna come down to a an all-in or a fold. Well, I think that I'm definitely, I'm just gonna fold here, and if Trevor has ace rag suited, so be it. Congratulations, Trevor, you owned me. Uh -oh. Ace three suited? Ace three suited, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I was like, if he has it, then he owned me. <laughs> You're sensing two threes on the flop. Yeah, two threes coming. Three, three, four. Three, three, four flop. You saved money. <laughs> I knew that there was, this was a spot where Trevor could be relying on his uh, position that he opened from, which was early position. And then the fact that he had a blocker in his hand, he had the ace. And then the fact that I'm making a squeeze play from the small blind, like all of these factors go into, he either has a really strong hand or he's turning a hand like ace rag suited into a bluff. The, the benefits to four betting uh, are that you get to knock Ethan out of the pot and obviously you can just win. You have a, I have a strong range opening on the gun, even though I guess I don't really have a strong range opening on the gun because of the, all the hands that I was opening. I didn't think that Johnny had that good of a hand in that spot. So again, field-based play. So I felt like it was gonna work more often than not. Now it's like, do, do I fold and take the safe route? And you know, because nobody's gonna care if I fold King Queen off to a four bet or do I, am I bold and I go for it? I found in poker so often when you're bold and you go for it, 
those are like what the hands that people talk about. Those are the ones that, you know, make you the hero in the situation. And you're not playing poker to be a hero. You just hopefully collect more of these moments where you made a bold, great decision. The point here is that he's bluffing with his hand and I have the opportunity to be a hero and rebluff him or I have the opportunity to take the safe route and fold. And in that spot, I decided to take the safe route and fold. Perhaps in the future, no spoilers, I might take the bold route and go for it. All right, so obviously gonna open this here. Um, not much, much to say about it. So that's a good hand and uh, put money in the pot. 30. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no action, just nits in the blinds over here. So this is gonna be a hand that I'm gonna open on the button for sure. And uh, with the dynamics that have been going on with Trevor, I will most likely call a three bet as well. Third. No rig, um, this is just gonna be a call and uh, we're gonna play some pots. All right, so this is a pretty cool flop for several reasons. First of all, it's definitely a better flop for my range than his, so I can bet a high frequency. Um, but I also, with my exact hand, have a lot of uh, backdoor potential. So I'm gonna have a lot of cards I can continue barreling on. Um, it is somewhat connected, so it's not like uh, the driest board where I'm gonna bet everything. So I'm not gonna use as small of a sizing as I would on some more disconnected boards. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go for around half pot and go from there. It's unfortunate, but uh, if uh, the ace was a heart, I would consider check raising and doing some fun stuff, but uh, definitely can't do it with this one. I have some discipline, you know. Um, this card's a little cut up. He's marking it's cards not, on it's us? Not, it's not bad, but it's a little You're bit. marking cards on us, Matt? Yeah, yes. You got me. That's how you know I didn't have an ace in my four about you, huh? <laughs> 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 Open. Third. I feel like uh, landing on the button here should be opening fairly wide. Um, but in the small blind, we'll just defend and see a flop. It's pretty playable. Three bet probably makes more sense, but flatting is fine, I think. Check here. Okay, cool. Um, this spot, he's gonna have a lot of small pairs and suited cards. Um, if you look at the suits of our hand, we don't block him from having a hand like six, seven suited or a hand like a seven suited. However, in this spot, I think that he would three bet both of those hands, button versus small blind. So we have a nice spot to bet small with our range on this paired board and probably just fold facing a check raise because we have a lot better hands to continue with. Hands that have back doors, hands that have straight draws and over pairs and then obviously trips and forex. So here we're just gonna bet really small. There's about 70 in the pot, so we're just gonna go 25 and um, expect to win a good bit of the time. But if he does raise, we're just gonna find a fold. 25. 
All right, this is where I'm not really too familiar, but with king high on this board, I feel like a lot of the times should be good here in the head. Definitely have more sevens in range. Um, let's just see if we can try to uh, get them to fold. I mean, I feel like if I call here, it kind of just opens myself to play a pot out of position and kind of, I don't know, I feel like raising here. There's no, there's really not a ton of merit to raising because I feel like on a rainbow board, trips are definitely more likely to slow play, but I mean, I just have more of them. So uh, trying to talk myself out of raising or maybe even out of calling, I'm not entirely sure, but we're kind of thinking king high might be good. So uh, we'll float one and see a turn. Okay, um, ace high here. We have just enough showdown versus worse offsuit broadways that float, basically trying to hit a pair. And then he might have some backdoor flush draw hands that he's going to try to realize his equity with for as cheap as possible and not really play a check raise. And it makes sense just because he's sure he has some 7x and some 4x as well for like some small suited stuff but i also just have hands like that in full where i also just have over pairs and very easy continues so in this spot i'm going to check with my showdown and then depending on what the river is you might be able to find a bluff i would check some of my flush draws here too just in case if a spade does appear i do actually have some strong hands as well that's why you can't just always bet your flush draws on the turn and with ace high i just have enough showdown to check down if he checks the river as well So, obviously we see the, probably the best turn card we can ask for. And him checking back gives us a lot of information where we're probably good here. But given this board, if we're betting, like I don't even know what I get called by, like eights are gonna have to fold. Um, and it just seems fairly unlikely that we're, on the turn at least, that we were behind. So. I don't know, we're gonna give him a chance to bluff at it because I don't think we get much value if we were to bet and uh, just bluff catch pretty much. Yeah, we just have enough showdown with our hand to check back and um, we're gonna win versus some worse stuff. We're gonna chop with some other ace highs and um, I expect that most of the time we're probably gonna lose to a small pair, but uh, our hand's too good to bluff. We also have really bad properties to bluff with holding the ace of spades, so we're gonna check back. I am just by far the least uh, competent and least experienced poker player in the field. So the whole point was to expose like one for me to like know how little I know about poker and like where to actually start diving into. Obviously, this is not a table of people that I normally play against. So the field that I play with is obviously a lot softer, but um, having to display my mistakes and like some punts that will come along the way is really what I've been doing on my YouTube channel since I started. So it's really nothing new of being uncomfortable and just displaying it for the public to see. I think it's just a really cool journey to be a part of. And like the experience was like super helpful. Now I just get to watch and hear Landon talk about spots all day. And it's all very valuable information that I just never, it just like brings a different light to how I saw the game. I think uh, this is definitely loose, but six-handed, I think it's okay sometimes. Given the fact that uh, everyone's seems to be pretty passive right now, we're gonna open this and once again, see what happens, pretty wide. 30. Uh, interesting spot here. I think I'm just gonna call. I could see, you know what? Landon's in the big lines and I kind of would really like to deny his equity and ISO rampage and go heads up. So I think I am gonna choose the three bet in the spot. Raise. 100. Unfortunately, I have to let it go. Good. 
Um, once again, another issue of opening super wide from under the gun, you're gonna face a lot of aggression. And put in spots where when we're out of position, this hand just plays horribly post. And uh, easy decision is to fold, but curious if she has another premium or is starting to see that my under the gun range is just way too wide. But regardless, this is just a fold. Happy to raise this one up from under the gun. 30. Okay, um, so on the button here, 200 big ones deep versus an under the gun open. Um, his range is extremely tight. Um, just because there's also no ante. If there's an ante, there's an argument for three betting this one. You're calling on the button. But in, in this kind of environment, it's just the right play to find a fold here. And it feels really tight, but it just is. So you just gotta make, make good folds. Uh, easy to defend here. Um, there's another gun, so obviously it can be dominated pretty often, but still too good to fold. I'll defend. Check. Um, having <clears throat> having two overs and the backdoor Broadway draw, I'm just gonna bet here. Don't have to bet big on this poor texture, no flush draws or anything like that. So I expect her to fold out most of fold out most of her hands for a small size in here. Just go with twenty five dollars. Twenty five. Interesting spot here. He's under the gun, and honestly, I would rather just have like a backdoor flush draw or something. My hand's pretty shit. Um, I think I'm just gonna let it go, even to the smaller size. All right, uh, we got a hand open here. I'm gonna keep it simple. Uh, same race size coming in. 30. Obviously a good holding from the big blind here. Raising it up from under the gun. Matt hasn't been terribly active. He's He's shown three, four uh, from a three bet position. I think that he's still on the relatively straightforward side here, but I still like my hand enough to fill the pot even though I'm out of position. So I'm gonna go ahead and three bet this one up to around $130. All right, so Johnny hasn't been getting too out of line, but he did just say several hands ago he three bet the king queen off. So uh, definitely don't think he's like so tight in these three bet spots, even though I'm uh, from up front, we are playing six max. So uh, effectively I'm, what am I, the low jack here. Um, also this hand is sort of right on the borderline, I feel like between a four bet and a call normally, but because he's been a little on the tighter side and because I'm uh, in the first position, and my range is a little tighter anyway, I don't think we need to form with this hand. I'm gonna continue through a call. I'm not surprised to see Matt continue with a call here. Hand's pretty interesting. Board texture is very dry. We have backdoor straight, we have backdoor nut flush here. Possibility for three streets if improved, if not, possibility for three streets of a bluff. He definitely can have some calls that are gonna have us crushed, you know, 
probably some over pairs like nines. With block tens, you could have jacks. So probably three. He'll probably four bet the other hands. 200 big blinds deep, but definitely could play some as a trap. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to bet this board texture and perhaps go three streets pending run out. Don't need to go big on this one. We'll go $100. All right, so this board is not traditionally that good for the aggressor. He's not probably going to connect with too many of the cards out there. Um, he could maybe have some to connect or some frequency, but I'm going to have way more of them basically. But because I do have way more of them, uh, this hand sort of falls very rapidly in my range as far as like hands I want to continue with. Even though he's picked a sort of small size and I could potentially uh, try to pick on that because I, I think he may well want to use a larger size on this board type. I think that this holding is just pretty bad to do so with. I don't block anything that connects with the board and uh, I don't really have any back doors to speak of uh, being off suit. So that being the case, even though ace queen high is going to be good here sometimes, I think it's probably better to uh, just fold, especially because I've sort of been, <laughs> been fucking around a fair bit here uh, post flop, putting in some light raises and, and getting caught some of the time. So I, I think that from an image perspective, this is also not the time to step super far out of line. So I'm just going to look at it. Mm -hmm. So with ace queen against Johnny's ace 10 on a kind of low sort of coordinated board, it really isn't a great board for the preflop aggressor, but it doesn't mean inherently that I have to bet with all my hands that don't connect. What's so interesting about these types of boards is that uh, even when the aggressor sort of isn't supposed to uh, aggress at a really high frequency, it doesn't mean that I just bet every hand in my range. There's still a lot of hands in my range that function better as a check behind. And with ace queen specifically, one thing that makes it a really good check back candidate is that um, we actually have a hand that will beat some of his give ups at a pretty high frequency. So the, the hands that he'll check, you know, that are like ace high, we beat most of those hands that are like king high, queen highs um, that are starting to give up, we beat those. And while there's definitely some merit to betting to sort of like clean up our equity and just get him to fold those hands that have, you know, a handful of outs, most of his hands really don't have a lot of equity against ours. And so what happens is if we bet a hand like ace queen, usually what's going to happen is he'll snap fold all the like king queen highs, you know, ace nine high and like all those types of hands that have probably at most six outs. And he'll continue with every hand that's beating us where we usually only have six outs. So when you're looking at sort of constructing a line across multiple streets and how to fit certain hand types into those lines, a hand like this functions really well as a check back because betting just sort of puts us in a spot where we know we're usually behind. And ace queen's not a very good hand to just turn into a straight up bluff in part because of blocker values, but in but also in part because it just rates to be good pretty often. All right, so we finally have a holding that we can raise and defend from a three bet. So. It's about time. I um, feel like, I don't know. It's about time we actually have a playable hand, I guess. 30. Uh, pretty weak hand to defend here versus this position, but I guess he flop. Come on. All right, so I feel like Trevor's range defending the big blind's gotta be pretty wide. Obviously on this board, we're pretty, we're sitting pretty well. Um, we've bluffed a lot against him and we're just gonna use the consistent sizing of like around one thirds pot, which would be what, 60, it should be like 20. And uh, hope to, I don't know, see what happens. Just go for value. 20. Uh, this board texture is a board texture I expect him to bet with a high frequency on. Uh, I'll have a lot of pairs between the three and the queen to bet, uh, as well as having you know, king, queen, queen, jack, queen, ten type hands. 
And then I'll have uh, you know, King Jack, King 10, all the uh, unpaired bluff hands. Uh, with my hand, I have an easy call with ace high and having gutter ball, so I'm gonna see you Uh, this three is a card that I could consider leading uh, because I'm gonna have way more threes than he will, um, depending from the big blind versus his open. Uh, I'm more likely to lead the middle card pairing if it's a higher card, like an eight or a nine or a 10, somewhere like that. Um, I still could lead this card and having the ace of diamonds in my hand would make it good to do so. Um, but I'm going to check here and then decide. I think he's going to check back here quite a bit. We'll get to realize our equity. I have the best hand a decent amount. I just don't expect him to barrel this card too often. So I think we'll just get, uh, check through and then see what happens on the river. Check. Right. <clears throat> I think uh, after looking at this right now, the three seems like a pretty terrible card for us. Sure, I think... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of his calling ranges would be like middle pair sometimes, like a 3x holding or some hand that uh, doesn't love this 3 either. I mean, 4-5 would probably continue, but I think uh, right now with Queen Jack, we have a hand that can get two streets of value. Also, what's going on in my head is how in the last hand I played against Trevor with the 10 high, I'm going to take the exact same line where I had nothing and check back turn. And here I have top pair and I can check back turn and play a little bit more deceptively. But overall, uh, I think with this three of diamonds here, it's a mix of deception, maybe a little bit of pot control as well, but maybe um, we can get him to bluff on the river, but we're gonna go and check this. Uh, now I'm in a situation where I have to decide whether I want to turn my hand into a bluff or if I want to check and just show down, hopefully beat some of his unpaired hands. The good thing about turning my hand into a bluff is I can get some folds from hands like maybe fours, fives, and sixes. And I'd rather have some of the other floats that I'd have, like um, some like 10 nines and jack tens that have backdoor uh, flush draws as my bluffs and then just have this as a showdown hand. Um, and expect to win if he checks back uh, with a pretty good frequency. He's, he might have some better ace size occasionally, which I could fold out if I bluff, but I don't think I need to bluff this combination. So. All right, well, now that he's checked all three times, we're pretty confident we have the best hand. Now it's just what kind of sizing to put out for value, and I want to go a little bit bigger. Uh, I mean, they've all seen me over bet pot with eight high, multi-way, and now uh, expecting our hand to be good here all the time. We're just trying to target, like, I don't even know what hands we can get a hero call from. Maybe fives, sixes, eights, maybe. But uh, I feel like if we can get big, we can either get a snap call or a hero call. So um, with the 100 in the middle, we'll go to 125. One and a quarter. Uh, so facing bet check bet line, uh, the hands that I can call with on river, um, well, I can have some really strong hands that I'm deciding to go with uh, check razor with. Um, and then I have some pairs that I can call. Uh, some, some flop floats that might contain a seven, like a seven that are easy check calls. Uh, I have a hand that's like not great in this situation. Um, now it just depends on what we think he's going to bet check bet with for value. Um, he could definitely have some of the weaker queens here, like queen 10, queen 9 suited. Um, just kind of a an interesting spot to be in here. Um, and I think I'm going to fold. So I'm definitely gonna open this one and uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. Uh, 
Uh, with my hand here, I'm going to be playing a three bet or fold strategy for the most part. So I'm just going to go ahead and three bet, take initiative, knock out, land in the big blind, and hopefully get a heads up uh, if Marley decides to call. I'm um, going to be continuing to use larger sizings given that we're deeper, like I have from the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to go to 150. 150. All right, so I don't really see much else we can do here but call. Hand's much too strong to fold, and uh, four bet folding our equity away would be pretty disastrous with a hand strength like this. We're in position. Uh, yes, we did open. Um, uh, I mean, he's probably going to play up here. It's three bet strategy in the phone wide anyway, so I feel pretty happy about the situation. I'm going to take a flop in position and uh, play a very good hand. Uh, pretty good flop for my hand and range. Uh, I'm going to be attacking this spot pretty aggressively and betting most of my hands um, in these positions. Uh, so I'm going to just start betting and go from there. One thirty. All right, easy continue here. Um, same reasons as pre-flop. Hands too good to fold. Too good to raise. Um, he's still got a big uh, range advantage, and we're just gonna continue through a call. Uh, when she calls flop, she can have uh, she can have me beat occasionally with a hand like ace queen. I think she would flat jacks in these positions pre flop. Um, deuces. Not sure if she'd open and flat three bet, but possibly. Um, can definitely have some queen jack as well. Obviously, we block that uh, with king queen. Turn of flush draw also in the spot, so obviously pick up added equity. And now I'm just deciding whether I want to, if it's too thin to continue betting for three streets, uh, or if um, I think it's not too thin, and I think I'll have enough barrels here, like with ace, with my ace king combos, and then some turn flush draws that will want to continue bluffing. Um, so I think I should continue betting, um, and I'm going to choose. Uh, kind of a medium sizing. So. 375. Versus that sizing, I feel like it puts our exact hand kind of in a really tough spot. I think I do need to call one more um, and reevaluate. I mean, I'm probably gonna have to follow River unless I improve, but I am gonna call one more and then uh, see what happens. Uh, so now the question becomes, is this too thin to go for three streets? And I don't think it is. I think I'm going to have a lot of bluffs on this run out. Uh, good run out for my hand and range. Uh, occasionally I'm going to run into ace queen. Occasionally I'll run into queen jack and occasionally I'll run into the jacks. Uh, but I think I, called, I, I can get called by uh, some queen 10 suited, queen 9 suited maybe. Obviously I block those. And then if she wants to hero a hand like king jack or jack 10, um, I want to give her the chance to do so. Yeah, so I think we're just going to go for all of it. Um, just want to check out and see how much we have here. All in? All in. Yeah, I mean, just have better hands. Can't go, just not getting the right price. Default. What'd you have? King Queen of Hearts. Fuck. Okay. 